Hello folks, um, so in this monologue I'm going to do a review of a company called NetVendor. Um, this is a property management slash vendor compliance company. So what they do is they approach property management companies and they tell them, hey, you guys have a lot of vendors, quote unquote. Vendors means contractors who come in and do improvements on the property and they need to be compliant with insurance requirements. Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to vet them. We're going to background check them and make sure they have a valid documents. They're insured, bonded, licensed, whatever, whatever you need, whatever you're requiring. And then, um, and then I'm going to certify them as compliant and then you can use them. Um, and then at the same time, they say to the vendor that uh, we are working for you too. We got a value proposition for you as well. Um, instead of having to chase down your insurance company every single time that um, there's a change in status or the document expires, we'll do it for you. All you got to do is tell us who your agent is and we'll contact your agent and pull the necessary documents from your agent. So it makes it easier for you as well. So win-win. Okay, the property management company doesn't have to do any um, vetting and the vendor doesn't have to chase the insurer. That's the value proposition that NetVendor offers. Now, they're not alone, by the way. There's other companies as well. Um, one of them is Compliance Depot. I did research on this. You'll, uh, you'll hear later. But um, but yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so why doesn't it work? Or at least it doesn't work in the NetVendor case. It probably never works really well. But NetVendor has atrociously botched up their job. It's just unimaginable how they could have done a possibly worse job than they are actually doing. And I'm not alone. I know for a fact I'm not alone because I looked up the Google reviews on this and there isn't a single positive review. So that's, yeah, that's not a good sign at all. Like typical, with a typical company, you'll have... Um, yeah, you'll have plenty of positive reviews and then you'll have, you know, 10, 15% of the reviewers will be negative. Uh, that's normal. But anyway, um, so why doesn't it work in the case of NetVendor and possibly with others as, uh, as well? Um, so it doesn't work for the property management company because they're actually a lot stricter than the property management company would have been. And that's not by design. It's not by... It's not by design. In other words, that's not the mandate that the property management company wants. It's not like it's telling them, hey, the reason we're hiring you is because we're just exhausted and, you know, we're, we're having huge liability issues because vendors don't have expired documents or they don't have proper coverage and we just can't track them down and please help us, save us. <laughs> you know, that's not what's happening. Again, they are approaching um, property management companies and they are saying... I want you to outsource your judgment on this. We're going to make the decision whether the vendor is compliant or not. And what they're doing is they're just basically disqualifying vendors that otherwise would have been qualified. By otherwise, I mean the property manager themselves, if they had chosen to evaluate the, the documents themselves, they would have said, oh, it looks perfectly fine. And, and the reason they would is because the documents are, in fact, perfectly fine. <laughs> And that vendor is just insane. They look at things and they see problems that uh, that normal people don't see. And uh, and by normal people, I, I mean to say even lawyers wouldn't see it. Um, like even a lawyer who is loyal to the company and wants to protect the company wouldn't say, oh, oh, sh oh, oh, crap, this this is going to expose my company to a liability. No, but that vendor, they're even worse than lawyers because they don't they don't they don't even know what the legal ramifications of anything is. They're not lawyers, right? All they're doing is they're supposedly, allegedly acting on behalf of the pro property management company to make sure the vendor has the proper credentials and certifications. But they don't really know what's at stake and what the property management company wants. And so they're not doing a good service to the property management company because they're being actually a lot stricter for no reason, for no valid reason, not in a good way, but they're being stricter than the property management company would have been had they evaluated the document themselves. Now, with regard to the vendor, um, they're not doing a, a service to the vendor either. So as I said earlier, supposedly they are the ones who are supposed to pull these documents from the insurer slash agent, but they don't do that. All they do, 
and this is just a gross dereliction of their duty and what they're advertising that they do, um, they don't do that. And I experienced this very intimately when I had my account with them. So they, uh, what they do is they send an email. Um, they never make a phone call. Never. I specifically requested that they do. I made them an authorized party on the insurance company that they could have called the insurance company directly. They never did that. Um, so they don't phone. They don't do anything. They send an email. Uh, an automated email, of course, right? Like, it's a canned email um, to whoever I tell them is the agent. Now, the problem is that, uh, <laughs> just like them, right? What do they have? They have, Everything is automated. They try to automate things. Technology, we have high tech. Blah, 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 blah. Tech technology never works. Just letting you know this. Um, but anyway, so... The insurance company has the same problem. The insurance company, for security and for whatever reason, for whatever bullshit reason, they don't accept emails. And I was working with Progressive Commercial, Commercial Auto, and I can't send them an email. Go ask me why. I don't know. But I cannot send them an email. So, um, so NetVendor is giving me a sample of what the COI is supposed to look like. I cannot send that sample to Progressive Commercial Auto for them to see what the uh, template is and how they can replicate a template like that to for me to be, be compliant. I can't send it to them. They don't have an email that's monitored and that they would receive and that they would look at. Um, stupid, I know, but you can't have a business that, I'm talking to NetVendor now, NetVendor knows that because they themselves don't have monitored emails, right? So, you know, yeah, if you don't do it, how and why would you expect others to do it, right? So, yeah, so it doesn't work. So what happens is that we have a conference call, it lasts an hour, yes, I'm not kidding, um, multiple of these, and uh, so me and NetVendor and Progressive, and they talk and they talk and they bullshit, and then they send some type of document in to NetVendor, and NetVendor rejects it. Rejected. Why is it rejected? Nobody knows. Okay. So, um, so what my point here being here is that it doesn't work. The value proposition for the vendor doesn't work because, uh, like I said, they're not really doing the legwork for me. They're just not doing it at all. Legwork, doing the legwork for me would mean actually making a phone call and really striving to get this matter resolved, not just doing something perfunctory as sending an email that bounces back and then they don't follow up on that and they never make a phone call. So that's just not helpful at all. Um, in fact, it makes things worse because now, you know, I'm relying on them to get this done, but it's not getting done. So it's a problem. And so now I got a third party to deal with when I'm trying to become compliant. Um, and so in my case, they actually rejected me for no valid reason. Um, what happened is that there was an X in the COI, and the X was meant to activate a box, and they, they and they said, oh, uh, there is an N next to that item, <laughs> indicating no, there was no N, there was an X. <laughs> Just at least be honest, right? They misinterpreted that X as meaning no, but any three-year-old would have who perused that document would have realized that that X actually means activating the box, meaning yes. Now, once again. Progressive commercial wasn't very wise to put an X instead of a check. So the check would have avoided these problems. But again, this was, this was a, 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 after a string of rejections. This wasn't the first rejection. They rejected again and again and again. They rejected me about 10 times. Okay? They never call you about it. They just send you an automatic, a canned rejection letter. And every time they're rejecting me, um, it just takes at least another 48 hours because it's not processed in real time. When I send an updated document in, um, even if I make a phone call to them about it, right? Um, it's not processed right away. It goes to a different team. So when I speak to someone on the phone, they're not the one processing the document. Pfft, why? So stupid. This whole organization, there's no logic to it. Uh, which brings me to the last point, which is how are they even still around? It's just stunning. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have to assume that uh, property management companies are going to wise up to this problem and they're either going to stop using them or they're going to be forced to adapt um, because the way, because again, I'm not the only one. They didn't just pick me personally 
to give me a hard time because they don't like the shape of my nose or the, or the name of my business, right? So uh, I have to, I must assume that they're doing this to others, as was, in fact, um, corroborated by looking up whatever scant reviews I could, in fact, find online. There isn't a whole lot, but there is plenty of them on Google. There is on BBB, uh, Better Business Bureau, and some other websites. But, um, yeah, so it's pretty bad. And, like I said... They are terrible. Now, I, I cannot believe that they can be any worse. I really mean it. Um, while still being, of course, a, a viable company. Oh, by the way, the only good thing, if there is any, is that they actually do pick up the phone. But it's completely useless. I mean, you can talk to them on the phone, but you're not talking to the people processing the document. And they're not helpful at all because they don't even know the terminology. <laughs> oh, this is, an, this is also hilarious. So they're, they're reading. This, these are really low-level employees. They pay them like $12 an hour. They don't know anything. They don't know about law. They don't know about insurance. They don't know about anything. All they're telling is they're reading the rejection notice from who, whichever department processed it, which again, it might be a bot for all I know because these are canned messages, right? They're not like really written by a live human. But anyway, they read that message to me and I say, oh, um, it's a non-hired auto needs to be activated. I, what is a non-hired auto? They don't know. And so we do a conference call with the insurance company. And the insurance company says, oh, we don't do non-hired auto. We don't, we can do this, but not, we cannot do that. Blah, 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 blah. And again, we're dealing with nobody knows what they're talking about. Because the insurance company knows a little bit more. They're a little better trained. Uh, but they don't truly understand why they can or cannot do a certain wording in the COI. Um, but like I said, uh, the insurance company was in fact able to explain to me at least something about these terms, whereas the net vendor clerk knew nothing. Zero. <laughs> stunning. Absolutely stunning. They know nothing. They don't process. They're not the ones rejecting or approving. And so it's just completely useless to make a phone call. And um, so in the latest uh, in the latest incident, what happened is that they sent me a letter requesting a COI. Um, there is a link in the actual email message that says, uh, press here to respond to this email and attach the document. So it automatically generates a subject line that um, is required in order for it to be processed correctly. Um, and so, and it allows you to attach a document. So I did that. I did that once I did that and no response and, uh, 24 to 48 hours did it again, still no response. So basically they're just, you know, either whatever the email went into spam or they, for whatever reason, they're not processing it. And at that point I had pledged to myself that I'm not calling them anymore. And so believe it or not, I canceled and I stopped working with that property management company because of this. So good job, NetVendor. Um, yep, this is it. So uh, I'm assuming most vendors just, just eat it. They bite the bullet and they deal with their bullshit. But uh, again, I've dealt with it already in the past. I just can't do this every three to four months. I just can't do it anymore. And the fact that the property management company is not aware of this or or ignores this problem of dealing with NetVendor and they're still sticking with them reflects very poorly on them as well. So at this point, it's just, this is an indictment, not just on NetVendor, but on anyone who uses them because they should be aware that NetVendor is doing a terrible, terrible job. And if they're not, or if they pretend not to be aware, or if they're ignoring it, then this is, again, this should be reflective poorly on that company as well. Now, this is a company that generated a lot of business for me, but um, that's it, you know. Enough is enough. I, I, can't, I just can't do it anymore. And, of course, there's other reasons as well why I stopped doing, which is not relevant to this monologue, but, um, but this was one of the major reasons was that they're still requiring me to go through NetVendor. So, um, so that's my take on NetVendor. Like I said, I don't know... Uh, how other companies operate, but my experience with NetVendor could not have possibly been worse. Okay, they did pick up the phone. Like I said, it's not helpful, but they did pick up the phone. That's the only thing positive I could say about it, even though, like I said, it wasn't, it was never helpful. 
and you know, I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe maybe I would have been better off for them not to pick up the phone because I wasted my time really being with them on the phone. Um, I don't think it helped at all. So I guess it gives some comfort to a, someone who is in a bind and oh, I can call customer service and they're actually picking up the phone, but they never helped. And I wasted a lot of time being on the phone with them. Um, I was I. I I, I, I got to figure that I was on the phone. We had at least four or five conference calls. Oh, at least. Probably even more. Um, in total, I was on the phone with them, I would say, for at least four to five hours. Uh, some of these conference calls lasted an hour. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Um, I had at least two or three conference calls that lasted over 40 minutes. Um, and then there was a, lot, a bunch of shorter calls. Um, in some cases, um, was I disconnected at some point? I don't remember anymore. That's also frequently what happens. You get just disconnected. Um, I just don't keep track anymore when it happens, when it happens, because it's just so frequent. So, uh, I'm talking about in general, you know, when you're dealing with these bureaucratic big companies, um, oh, I'll, let me place you on hold, click, bye-bye. <laughs> and it's always in, in a situation where it's convenient for them to just hang up on you and... <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.